Alrighty, welcome guys to another .p in house. This is TJ Sutton on the mic with Jen Giraffe. How you doing? Hello, hello. I hope my mic is coming through. I believe it is. So, another Lobby Three game tonight. Let's see what we have in store for us. First, ban Bristleback. God bless. <laughs> yes, for real. I've had. I've lost so many games recently to Bristleback, and I'm sick and tired of this hero. Oh god, I already love this lobby. I mean, we got a troll, we got a Trent, and a Bristleback, all banned. I'm already having fun. Now all we need is, like, a Slark ban, or a Meep. That's strange, a Meepo. I don't know if anyone in here plays Meepo. Um... I mean, Meepo's fun to play against if, you don't, if the person who's playing it doesn't know how to play, but uh, yeah. other than that... Maybe they know something we don't. Yeah, there's a handful of these players I'm uh, not familiar with, so that might be a target ban that I just was unaware of. Five seconds. I agree. Meepo is pretty specific, so... Mm-hmm. So we've been seeing a lot of first pick Crystal Maidens, uh, but recently... Oh, well, I was about to say, we're not going to see one for this team at least. Uh, yeah, I was definitely going to call out the clockwork. I knew he wasn't banned, and he's definitely one of the bigger heroes of the meta right now. Mm -hmm. He was nerfed very slightly, though, in this past patch. Uh, I think his hookshot damage was reduced. Yeah, it was. Uh, he was getting a few too many kills with his hookshot, so they... Decided to nerf it just a tad. Centaur, first pick, good offlaner, big tanky boy that can uh, stay in lane for a pretty long time, not have to worry about too much. Yes, definitely a big boy, and he, uh, with his ult, he can definitely get everyone there and team fight or everyone out, so. Hmm, Kunkka. Been seeing a lot of Kunkka in the past couple patches, and kind of nice to see him back. I agree. I miss this hero. I think he's really fun to watch. Uh, his flashy team uh, team fight and everything like that. So I definitely like seeing him in game. And um, I know a lot of uh, pros run him as support, but lately he's been a little bit of a carry. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, really just, uh, I guess, depends on what your team comp is and what you're wanting to run. I saw him earlier today in a summit game where he was in the mid lane. Uh, helping the mid uh to harass i think it was quap or something he was using his tide bringer to oh yeah to harass the uh, the enemy mid laner out of lane yeah that's a very good harassing uh i think that's why he's so good in lane right now because he can harass so hard on the other side uh again crystal maiden i like seeing her here all of these picks are uh not very uncommon but uh definitely good right now mm-hmm So Let's an o see an, uh, I was about to say an, an OD ban coming out. Yeah, uh, OD is really good against the Bristle, so I was kind of curious on why they would have banned him out. Maybe he's, uh, I mean, I guess with his Astral, he's pretty good in general. Yeah, and I think he can also, I, I'm, I'm always fuzzy on this interaction. I can't remember what the interaction between Astral and X marks the spot is. I don't remember, I don't think he purges it. I think he does actually end up still going back to wherever, but you can at least use it to possibly dodge some of, some of the damage from like uh from the boat or from yes, yeah. his from uh boat, torrent. Sure. Definitely agree on that one. Looks like they're focusing on their mid lane right now with that Ember Spirit um ban there. Yeah, and then another TA ban. So definitely looks like these teams are gonna go for their mid next. So, Odie, Meepo, uh, TA, Ember, what, what are these teams going for? Could be going for an Invoker, or... Yeah, definitely, I was thinking the same thing. Okay, and, and yet another, no Shadow Mid Fiend. Ben. Yeah, I can see the Invoker coming out here. Uh, although he was... I see that his alacrity cooldown was increased, but um, I'm not an invoker player myself. Not sure how that would affect. Yeah. I remember some of the .p guys talking uh, in the um, in one of their podcasts the other day, talking about how a lot of people are complaining about 
uh, the alacrity increase, but really, honestly, are you really going to notice it that often? I mean, right. especially uh, th these are changes that affect the you know the top tier level of Dota. Um, mm. Maybe not so much. Uh, yeah, our level. Yeah. Oh, a drow rhythm. coming out. I I love this hero. I think she she is pretty kind of underrated right now. I mean, she was really popular for a couple patches back, but uh, yeah, I really like her here with her silence and her frost arrows and the damage that she can bring out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting is how she performs pre-level 6. Uh, I always find her to be a fairly weak laner until she hits level 6, and then she can start really uh, really going. Um, but mm -hmm. we'll just have to see what she yeah. does and, and who they draft as well to compliment. Because so far, nobody's comp nobody is uh, benefiting from her precision aura. Right, because both of them are melee heroes. I mean, both sides do have really good team fight right now, um, with Warlock's uh, rock and Kunkka's boat. So I could see the uh, the clashes being super fun to watch. Mhm. Mm All right. So now we have a hard support dazzle, probably shallow grave, uh, maybe for the Drow, something like that, because she is pretty squishy. Uh, if they can get on top of her. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. Lena. Okay. So Alina coming out. Um, I was about to say, I was, I was about to s wondering if this uh, raiding team was going to pick an axe, but they already have their clockwork for their offlane, so I don't think they're going to pick an axe to counter Dazzle's Shadow, shallow Grave. Um, Ten seconds. So, so what is this team? Okay, so they need a mid. So a uh, sniper, possibly, or a storm? Or yep, even a sniper. death prophet. Yeah, I, I was thinking about the Death Prophet, too. She has very good uh, push potential um, early game as well. Mm-hmm. And an Invoker would still benefit from... Uh, we could be seeing an Invoker come out. Yeah, I would like that Invoker. He'd be he'd paired really well with the Warlock with huge team fight to come out, uh, especially on a squishy hero like Dro to kind of get into the back lines. Oh, I, was, I was talking about for the Dire. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was talking about for the Radiant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... It would be a good ban for them to ban the Invoker. Um, okay, so they ban out the Queen. Okay, so this... Okay, they need a safe lane. I mean, there's so many safe laners open right now. Oh my goodness, yeah. they. It looks like they ban mainly just the mid laners, so they really want to focus on this Lina. That's what it looks like. I could see a Luna come out. Uh, she can benefit from the Arcane Aura, uh, being able to spam her Eclipse. Um, I agree. Or even a gyro, able to spam his rockets or his flat cannons. For a safe lane? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, too bad they banned the Sven. I think the Sven would have been good here. So that was a good, that was a great ban on the dire side, actually. Yeah. Uh, Juggernaut. I mean, Juggernaut can always use more mana. So. Of course, yeah. Yeah. yeah this, Juggernaut good would be good. The side is fairly open. Yeah, I think they did a good job drafting. They kind of didn't really give anything like super obvious of what they wanted. Uh, but then again, the bands weren't very focused on the safe lane. Let's see. It's like they're kind of taking their time with this one. Yeah, might as well use up the time you got. So. I agree. I'd like to see a... I mean, I'm not sure about the synergy, but I, I definitely like the Hero Chaos Knight. I'd like to see him. Uh, appear a little bit more often. Um, yeah, he could be all right. Uh, I wonder, though, about... Oh, an Ursa. Okay. So, fairly okay. team fighting build-up and a Storm and Spirit. There's a Storm Spirit. Yep, so that's some good lockdown for the Clockwork or Ursa. Can Lightning Ball out of the... out of the cogs, if need be. So... Right, yeah, that would be great. Well, I'm excited. I like both these drafts. I can't I can't say which I like better, but uh, because of the draw, I'm probably going to have to go with uh, the Dire team. I uh, I like this draw pick quite a lot. I don't know how she synergizes, but I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, I think, she, let's see, she goes up against Clockworth, so hopefully she'll have at least somewhat of an advantage trying to zone out um, Clockwork. 
but right yeah i agree but if she gets stuck in those cogs she's a little bit too squishy for that so yeah she'll definitely be done for if she gets stuck in uh, in a cog with a battery assault going i yeah, agree definitely uh, i don't know i don't know who i favor because i really like this team fight of the radiant it's just whether or not they can scale or either take the game early enough or scale into the late game because Ursa will start to fall off there near the yeah. end. I can't see Ursa getting really close to any of these heroes. You know, Centaur with his ult and Dro, you know, by the time Ursa can even try to get to Dro, you know, he'd be, take so much damage already. Yeah. Unless and he even with the storm. Unless he catches her with a blink. Right, right. Or sneaks up. And Storm is so slippery in general, so. Mm-hmm. Definitely well, going to be an interesting on one. I agree. Oh, yeah, 696 to 628. Very close with Tower. Alrighty, well, I'll introduce the Radiant team and then hand it over to you to do for the Dire. So sure. we have Be Happy on the Ursa, Spooby on the Warlock, Cybonic on CM, and Darkstar on Lena. We have the sisters on the team. Fantastic. Hopefully, they can, hopefully they can play well. I agree. I like to hear some of that fun dialogue. So over on the Dire side, we have SA51 on the Dro Ranger, Mr. T on Dazzle. Down towards the bottom, we have uh, Kona on the Storm Spirits, the uh, King Pick on Kunkka, and we have Boomashock on the Centaur War Runner. Meanwhile, top lane, we have... Um butt toucher up here trying to uh, snag rune but mr t and essay are ready for him and pretty heartily uh run him early. out yeah with that early aggression yeah he places his ward but it was immediately seen by both these here so that's going to get dewarded pretty early uh i feel yeah they're already pinging it out yeah both of them so those won't last too long might be able to block a camp but We'll see. So two each. Two runes each. So we'll see how this goes. Pretty pretty even. So what's this uh, lane matchup look like right now? Uh, for which lane? Oh, no, sorry. I, I had a bug for some reason. Like none of the none of the pictures were coming up. The profile pictures. Oh, anyway. that's weird. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm good now. All righty. So yeah, see how this early game mid lineup fate looks. So, so far, Storm with the only okay. No, Lena is able to get a last hit. Yeah, this mid lane will be pretty good. I mean, kind of determine which way uh, this lane will go. Uh, Storm Spirit, I would say, uh, against Lena because of his. Uh, I'm sorry, not Storm Spirit. Lena because of her spammable uh, dragon. Is it Dragon? Dragon Her Slave? Fire. Yes, Dragon Slave. Um, I think if she can get some damage on Storm early, that'll lane him, uh, push him out a little bit earlier. Yeah, so both, all lanes, no clear advantages from the start, no rotations early to try and uh, mess up a, a early game lane. Um, Kona does catch a Dragon Slave to the face, but uh, seems to be doing all right. Uh... Probably yeah, I think he has to be careful of that Dragon Slave, definitely. Uh, it does quite a bit of damage to him early game. Yeah, exactly. But Tetra having a little bit of uh, issues up here, kind of getting zoned out um, here and there. Yeah, they do have that tri lane going against him, and he's moving a little far forward, but uh, his cogs keep him safe. Yeah, it does burn some of the mana of Dazzle, which I'm sure he doesn't mind. Battery assault coming out from Butt Toucher just to harass Mr. T, but not much really there. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Cybonic has his his clarity uh, canceled by Boomashock, who is contesting this neutral creep camp. We do have a Kunkka, though, rotating over here to this side. Snags the bounty rune, and we'll head oh, towards he does mid. Get out. Yeah. Gets pinged out immediately. He looks like professional butt toucher will chase him. I think, I think uh, probably he should have just turned and as soon as he saw him grab it, just went back to 
his lane because he missed out on at least three or four last hits. Darkstar now, though, getting rotated on by King Pink and Co Kona, pardon me, uh, but is able to get back and tango up and heal up. Uh, Mr. T, though, getting a lot of harass from uh, Butt Toucher, but is able to escape, and Butt Toucher needs to uh, cut, fall back as well to heal up as SA came forward to harass him out. Might need to file a uh, restraining order on Butt Toucher. Yeah. It's getting a little too close. A little too close for comfort. Definitely. Uh, it, going back to that mid lane, it would have been very detrimental for Darkstar if... Uh, Boomer Shock Co does get frostbited here on the bot lane, throws down the hoof stomp to save himself, and Cybonic won't be able to catch up. And Boomer Shock will make it out with his life. He'll be fine. He's a big boy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if Kunko was able to successfully uh, get that rotation on Darkstar, an early game uh, kill for Kona would have been very good for him. Shadow Word being thrown onto King Pink. Torrent comes out. King Pink and Spooby trading hits. Uh, Frostbite coming out on King Pink. He needs to be careful. He might go down here to the Shadow Word. No, nope, it ends and he is able to escape with about 80 health. Here comes Boomashock. Cybonic grabs the rune. He throws out a host stomp. Will he double edge? No, continues to try to right click her down. There comes the double edge. She tangos up and Starts walking away. Throws out a frostbite to keep him back, but she's so slow he might catch back up to her. Nah, he'll just go back to farming the lane. Yeah, definitely. Crystal Maiden's, uh, you know, early game um, movement speed is so terribly slow. It's a good thing she picked up a win lace here. Um, they also did kind of nerf her a bit. Uh, her frostbite mana cost has increased. Just a bit, but enough to where it Mr. T, Cotton Cogs up here with Battery Assault going on. He Shallow Graves himself. Now they turn on him. SA throwing out Frost Arrows. Uh, will he go down? Does get a Poison Touch. SA cuts down, trying to cut him off. Another Frost Arrow comes out. One, maybe two more hits. Looks like he's going to retreat. Oh, he does hit him. And just as the uh, Fountain comes up. Uh, Vortex on Darkstar. Darkstar throws down the Light Strike Array to get away. Throws out Dragon Slave, but will get brought down by King Pink. Yeah, again with that Kunkka uh, rotation, I think uh, he's doing really well trying to get around in that first. Uh, sadly, it didn't go to Storm Spirit, but uh, nevertheless, still first blood. Yeah, I, I was about to say, this Kunkka has been really uh, mobile around this map, has really uh, played a part in numerous lanes and helped out his team create some space. Definitely agree. I think a roaming kunkka is a scary kunkka, so... Oh, Hoof Stomp come out. And Boomer Shock throws out the double edge. Spooby uses Shadow Word on himself and just walks away. Just n missing a little bit of burst damage to take him down. Maybe by when he gets a third level double edge, it'll be enough to take down one of these squishy supports. Yeah, I definitely agree. Centaur is so tanky, though. I mean, they've tried and tried again to try to get him, but, uh, yeah, he's definitely one of the harder heroes to take down. They are pinging him out, though. Yeah, he was searching for Spooby there in the tree line, but good job of juking by Spooby. But Toucher once again getting harassed back to underneath his own tower. SA diving, possibly? Nope, decides to back up. Yeah, well, it looks like uh, as far as the net or the last hit to denies, Ursa is way up there uh, with his last hit. So despite this centaur, he's still able to farm a little bit, a little freer because this warlock is doing a great job of uh, getting this centaur uh, zoned out. Mm hmm. And lots of denies too, keeping him from getting most of that experience as well. Yeah, I agree. And this Dro, compared to the uh, Clockwork, she's definitely uh, taking over with her last hits and denies. Yeah, and she's about halfway to level 6, so once she gets that marksmanship, she's going to be sitting pretty happy and will then uh, be able to push this top tower quite soon. Yeah, definitely agree. Professional Butt Toucher is uh, losing quite a bit, though. I mean, he's a little behind on CS and... All that, and he's being pushed back quite a bit often by this Dazzle. Spooby also going way down deep into these lanes to harass, um, doing a good job trying to keep 
the centaur at bay as much as possible. I think once yeah. centaur hits like level five, he starts really getting hard to zone out. Um, just really depends on how much he levels his return. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's really important that Ursa gets his early game farm. I mean, other than that, otherwise he'll fall off really quickly. So, uh, great job on trying to making sure this guy is fed. Oh, X marks the spot, comes out on Spooby. So, lands a torrent, hoof stomp comes out, and he'll be finished off by King Pink. Meanwhile, Be Happy comes in and takes down, I don't know, Cy Cybonic gets the kill on Boomashock with the Frostbite. <laughs> Kill steal. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but yeah, but this Kunkka's doing a great job of another X marks the spot and torrent comes torrent combo comes out. This time Cybonic goes down to a remnant by Kona. Kona now vortexes. Be happy, be happy turns on him, but is unable to do much. Spooby though, getting uh gone on by Kona. Might go down another torrent coming out, but misses the mark. And Spooby is still getting harassed by these illusions. But now out comes the Shadow Word to try to heal himself back up. Right, yeah. Definitely great rotation from Kona and King Pink. I mean, despite the fact that Boomashak did go down, um, they were able to bring this lane kind of back to not equilibrium, but a little bit more in their favor uh, because Boomashak was you know, not able to get anything done. Radiance top tower is under attack. So... One of the, like when you play Centaur, you after you get your tw tranquil boots, you usually go either Hood of Defiance or Blink, really depending on the situation. Uh, which do you think Boomashock should go for uh, in this in this game? Um, I would say I, I would go for the Blink. I think Blink is you know having mobility would always be great to get in the right position. Oh, uh, be happy like... getting gone on. Almost goes down, but thanks to his clockwork coming in with the clutch uh, cogs, he's able to turn and take down uh, King Pink. Meanwhile, Butt Toucher taking down Boomashock as well. So they lost two Storm Spirit there to clear out some of the wave, but has to zip back underneath his own tower for safety. Uh, but yeah, going back to uh, the item build, I, I think Blink is always a good idea when it comes to mobility, especially later in team fights. Uh, you know, uh, trying to kite up the Ursa and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that is a tier one for the dire side. Taking a, uh, SA taking advantage of the absence of heroes in this lane to push and take out that tower. Uh, so. Yeah, I agree. They definitely rotated quite heavily down to this bottom lane. Uh, you know, I don't know how useful that might have been. I feel like this bottom lane might have been lost already. Um, you know, just because Ursa had such a good early game, but uh, they did lose quite a few heroes. Here they are, even now in kills. Let's see, how are we doing on items? Okay, Lena has her... Okay, she's about to ship out her uh, mana boots to herself and has her soul ring. Progressing quite well, I'd say. Oh, Kono with an invis rune waiting, sitting here on Dark Star, waiting for his teammates to arrive. Out comes the Vortex. Poison touch on her. Gets gusted up so she can't do anything, and Mr. T will actually end up finishing her off. Great positioning by Kona. Uh, that was a really good gank and usefulness of the invis rune. Mm hmm. Good patience. That Definitely agree. That might end up costing them their uh, tier one mid. Oh, uh, all there coming out from Boomashock throws out the double edge. Be happy is unable to <laughs> kills himself off the return damage on Boomashock. Spooby though trying to catch up to him, but Boomashock just too fast for him. Yeah, when you're a horse, that that tends to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Despite their uh, laning phase, it looks like that the Dire side is you know, catching up quite well. I mean, they've already taken down two, two towers um, and able to get the jump on this Ursa. So I, I think that the Dire side looks like to be moving forward in the right direction. Yeah, and I think uh, SA's doing a good job of rotating between lanes and helping his team push and rather than just kind of AFK farming in the safe lane uh, and not being too static. So. Yeah, I agree. Looks like we have a three-man rotation going up top. They smoked up. Here come, out comes the X marks the spot in Torrent. 
but I don't think they have to come around. Out comes the weave to lower his armor. He tries to hook shot, but gets uh, gusted and will probably go down, throws out the cogs, uh, but too little, too late, and he'll go down, and SA is just going to continue to farm creeps. Man, this three-man team looks a bit unstoppable. I, I never thought about this combo together, the Dro, Dazzle, and Kunkka. This Kunkka is doing a fantastic job of just getting around to where he needs to be, being there for the kills. Be happy, taking his first Roche at 13 minutes, and finishing up his uh, Vlads while he's at it. So He definitely had a really good uh, start. Mm -hmm. So I think as long as he can keep the momentum going, uh, he should he shouldn't be falling off. Yeah. So there's his Vlad's. Uh, looks like Boomer Shock is saving up for a blink. He's at twelve hundred gold, so hopefully in the next couple of minutes he'll be able to get that and start initiating for his team. Definitely yes, definitely agree. Uh, we have quite a heavy rotation up towards top. Were they hunting for someone up here? Or are they trying to push this out? Uh I think they I thought could. that pe that so they were rotating, but it looks like we might have a five-man smoke. F yep, five-man smoke coming out from this uh, radiant team. Where are they looking to okay. go? Oh, they see Kona. Smoke breaks. They decide to ignore him. He comes in, and here out comes the weave. They go on Kona, or Mr. T. Meanwhile, SA gets hookshot by immediately Gus and a Laguna Blade to finish off Mr. T. Uh, looks like SA will go down to Butt Toucher. And so, yeah, two man sm uh, smoke gank. I would say, yeah, definitely a successful gank. There might have been a miscommunication there with half the team going for the Dro and the other half going for the Dazzle. But uh, nevertheless, it was great pick off to get that Dro early. Uh, she was uh, a top of the net worth, so. I think it was great to get her down and the rock was dropped it looked like for and, that tower yep and used to take down the tower so good use of that try to probably push out a lane or farm some camps with it meanwhile ursa and cybonic down here in the bot lane have to be careful the four heroes in the three heroes in the vicinity right yeah three heroes okay. yeah it's dropping down aggressive ward looks like they're just waiting it out they know that be happy is down here now he has support, just waiting on them to initiate on him. Cybonic shows and they just start to back up now. Yeah, definitely noticed there was a four man down here. Kona does get spotted out by the rocket flare and has to back up. Yeah, looks like these guys are going to back up behind their tower. A oh, scan coming out from the dire team. Uh, they get the clockwork in on it, so they know that there's heroes down there. Yeah, Dazzle did a great job of putting out this aggressive war, so they did have a little bit more vision. Uh, they did see that the four heroes were there. So, good game sense. Able to back up. Doesn't lose anyone off of it. Great use of these uh, wards. I definitely think that uh, these placements have been very positive for the dire side to get some vision on their jungle and see the rotations that are coming around. Mm-hmm. So, looks like this team, this radiant team, is positioning to try and take this tower. Um, yeah, just keeps on trying to get more vision, but yeah. Yeah, I hope this warlock comes down. I think he would be a, a great addition to this. If they do uh, plan on taking this tower because everyone is down here. Yeah, I think, well, yeah, they see that Spooby is down here trying to push out this mid lane. I think they should feel pretty confident to uh, initiate and not have to worry about too many repercussions. Hookshot coming out. Cogs, uh, Lolly King gets caught in it. Laguna Blade out on Bo Boomershock. He goes down. Out comes the ghost ship. Lolly King fighting uh, uh, Butt Toucher, but unable to get him. Be happy, might go down here. Uh, yep, he goes down, but he has Aegis. Meanwhile, the butt toucher still getting gone after up here. Are they going to catch SA? Does not look like it. Yeah, I don't know. That I felt like that was a little bit of a sloppy initiation. Uh, it did go in favor of the Radiant side. Uh, it just seemed like the 
dire side wasn't quite ready or they didn't expect what was going to happen or for them to dive that tower. Um, it felt like everyone kind of scattered and separated rather than turning and fighting. Oh, SA missed the Gus and in comes uh, Ursa and is able to take him down. Now he's going on Mr. T. Out comes the Rock. Uh, but Toucher is able to get away, I think. Mr. T shallow graves himself to try to survive. Kona playing Ring Around the Rosie with Butt Toucher. And will not bring. Still going on Butt Toucher. Be happy, able to bring down Earth, or, uh, Mr. T up here in the top lane. Oh, Hookshot comes out from Butt Toucher, but he's able to get out. And, but in comes a torrent from Kunkka, saving his teammate, Mr. Happy, or Be Happy, still chasing after these ones, uh, but gets X marked back, and I think they finally disengage. Man, that was a very long engagement from these two teams. I agree. Yeah, they were definitely doing that long runaround that chased down the towards the bottom. Uh, I think it would have been better to leave the Golem up, maybe hitting that tower a little bit to at least get some damage on that guy. Uh, but instead, he was just kind of chasing around and walking. Yep, trying to use the last couple moments of his life to farm. But... Uh, let's see. Okay, so our... our Centaur is very close to a, a blink dagger, so I'm sure he's looking forward to grabbing that soon. Probably, oh, he's probably walking over there to uh, grab it now. Five more gold. There we go. There you go. SA, what's he working on? Hurricane Pike, yep. So just trying to get some stats, it looks like. Yeah, yep, I agree. It looks like despite the, the early game that they were able to run some kills, it seems like the Steyr side might be a little bit under farmed if they could just pick up their items um, before they engage next time. Uh, the net worth graph is looking uh, the top two right now of Lena and Ursa. And I think that it is because of the burst damage that Lena is able to get out and Ursa just being Ursa. Mm hmm. Yeah, but we've been seeing quite a bit of fighting. It looks like uh, the teams of trying to recover on some of that lost farm now. Let's yep, I agree. Just... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> it looks like, yeah, like what you said, the team now is just trying to get their farm back up, see if they can get their items. Uh, it's the best part of Dota where people are just farming. <laughs> so, let's see, what... Let's take a look at some of these items. Let's see what we have coming out for some of these heroes. Oh, it looks like we had ch the Ursa tried to jump onto that centaur, but oh, he gets caught out. Oh, really gets yep. Response by three, but oh, he actually turns and blows up Boomashock. Now he's going on Mr. T. Mr. T. Shallow graves himself, but be happy he's taking this tower damage. But looks like he'll be able to survive with uh, Shadow Word, and uh, SA is able to finish off a. Uh, all too eager Spooby who dives a bit too far, seems like. <laughs> uh, that was a great rotation, I think, from the Radiant side, getting up there to support the really aggressive Ursa. He did move forward quite a bit uh, just to see if he could get that jump uh, on the Centaur. Uh, both blinks were revealed, I think, uh, in that clash. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, so Ursa has his blink. He's now approaching his, uh, yeah, his BKB. BKB. How much time do you think is left on the timer for this Radiant team before he starts to uh, fall off and the uh, the Dyer's <sighs> able to hold him off? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, not very long. He's been, you know, although aggressive, he has been successful with his... Uh, with his gank attempts and oh, oh. lolly king able to x mark uh butt toucher before he's able to make head out great play and boomashock finish, finishes him off with a double edge great play by uh kunkka yeah definitely i agree i, I think they need to start dealing with this ursa soon before he starts snowballing out of control i mean they it looks like they're able to deal with quite a few of the other heroes but once all together i i think the radiant has a little bit better uh clash or team fight potential mm -hmm. so do you think that this do you think that this radiant team should be maybe uh grouping up and fighting a bit more and trying to just push this advantage that, the, that they have with this ursa right now i think right now at this point where ursa is standing uh I, I think it would be the best play to start taking objectives and moving you know towards taking the towers rather than focusing on on getting kills 
um, because the, it seems like the dire side is not quite ready yet to face them as five. Mm hmm. Um, I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a four staff coming out for King Pink to probably save himself from those hook shots. Uh, do we have any other four staffs on this team? Doesn't look like uh, it. As of this moment, no, I don't see one. I mean, we do have the gust and the X mark. So with this four staff, I think that's quite a bit of all being able to uh, push these guys around or force them. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Also uh, have right. a four staff out for Cybonic as well. Very nice. Yeah, so it looks like uh, these guys are just up in their jungles trying to get some farm, get their items. Uh, let's see what these guys have in their inventory. Uh, Darkstar was able to finish up her bloodstone. I'm sure she is happy about that one. Oh, for, <laughs> I keep forgetting that CM and Lena are on the same team. I thought they were about to face off here on the yeah. top room. <laughs> They're going to fight for it. Sibling rivalry. Looks like a three-man smoke just occurred. I think they might be heading up towards that jungle. All right, in comes be happy. Out comes a vort, uh, uh, lightning ball coming in from uh, Kona. Gets jumped on by uh, oh, Butt Toucher now. Hook shots in, but in comes the boat. Mr. T taking a lot of damage here. Gra graves himself, but will end up going down. Be happy, chasing King Pink, blinks in. Uh, we'll get brought back. Laguna Blade comes out by on King Pink. He might go down here now. Out comes a stun by Boomashock and a, a Vortex coming in from Kona. Kona getting frozen up. Uh, still trying to get away from this Ursa. Ursa now blinks in and takes down Boomashock. And so that's a three-man uh, white for, from this Radiant team. And now this will yeah, be a lost tier two. I believe I disconnected during that clash, but I did catch most of it. Uh, it was, I think that was a great boat from Kunkka. He was able to catch out to you there in the very beginning. Uh, maybe the uh, Radiant side were just not looking out for it. They were really focused on trying to catch out those heroes towards the top. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have... Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. I was about to say, Lena, I was checking Bloodstone charges on the Lena and on Storm. Yeah, last I saw Lena, I think she was at 12. She might have picked up a few during that clash. She actually is at 9, so... Oh, she got taken down by Boomashock, yeah. Uh, but immediately came right back because of... The Bloodstone. Of the Bloodstone. I st even without the... Uh, the... Respawn Time talent. I th it's ridiculous how fast she comes up. Oh, my God. So I agree, yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm happy but I mean the respawn talents were taken out of the game. That was just not fun to like expend all of your energy trying to kill someone and just to have them come back up automatically. Yeah. So it looks like they might be dancing around this mid tier two thinking about taking it as well. Looks like Centaur might be building towards the uh what is this gonna be? The assault cuirass or the Shivas? Uh, looks like a Lotus Orb, actually. Oh, yeah, I didn't see his, uh, quick buy. You are correct. Out comes, uh, a d double edge coming out from, uh, Boomashock to take down the Ursa. Ursa now blinks in on the back line, going after Kona. Uh, Boomashock, though, will go down to Dark Sarge, throwing out right clicks on that back line. Cybonic needs to be careful. It's taking a lot of tower damage. Will actually go down to the tower. Mr. T will finish off Be Happy. Laguna Blade coming out. But not uh, doesn't finish anybody off. Butt Toucher eats cheese, but goes down anyway. And X marks the spot, and Torrent comes out on Dark Star. Now taking tower damage and a vortex to finish her off by SA. Spooby, though, trying to get away, throws down the the rock to to counter initiate. He's trying to stand and fight, keep his ground, but he'll lose his life, and looks like he'll probably lose his golem as well. Yep. And that is a five-man wipe. Yeah, that, that just shows the power of the dire side, uh, dire side team fight. I mean, once you can get them together and 
I mean, if they're not ready uh, or they initiate properly, they definitely shows that they can punish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Storm definitely played a big, uh, big role there, zipping in and out and around and just causing a lot of chaos in that fight. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree. And and now with uh, having that level two on her marksmanship for Joe, she's pushing out quite a lot of damage just from the back lines. And there isn't really a way for people to get up to her. I mean, the Ursa gets focused on so quickly, even with his blink dagger. Looks like an arcane. Forceful. Yeah, some an arcane rune being pinged out for his storm spirit. Mr. T will be guarding that with his life. Man, 19 bloodstone charges on Kona. He's uh, starting to really snowball here. Oh, yeah, definitely. I agree. Where Darkstar only has her six right now. Yeah. Ho hopefully she'll be able to catch back up some on, on in terms of uh, bloodstone charges. I feel like once it falls below six, it really starts to become not that useful. Uh, so hopefully she doesn't fall... Uh, below that number. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, boat coming out and a vortex up here on the top lane, and Kona will finish off Butt Toucher, who was trying to push out the lane. Yeah, Storm is working on his orchid right now, so he'll be quite scary when that when he can get that finished. And it looks like Sa just also uh, finished her Sage and Yasha S and Y. Some more damage coming out. Yeah, she's getting, she's getting, she's becoming a really hard hitter. Uh, it's going to be fast on taking down these towers. Mm-hmm. Looks like we have a group up from this dire team. Looks like they want to take down this top tier two, but we'll see if this radiant team gives it up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, they're starting to. Uh, Lose out a bit on the push right now. I mean, this is going to be the tier two for, or all three, excuse me, the mid tier two and this tier two, if they can initiate on this. But it looks like they're just going to back off. They know that a uh, golem is available. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think I'd like to see a little bit more split push by uh, SA. But then again, I guess he is one of their primary damage dealers. Yeah, I agree. He's definitely vital to their team fight just to be kind of cleaning up all this, uh, all the things from the, you know, the Kunkka uh, boat and Storm Spirit. And I don't know, this Ursa, is, uh, it is a top, he is the top of his team, but he is kind of falling below this Dro and Storm right now. Uh, he is number three on the net worth graph. Yeah, not that much far be, not... Not very far behind, but I think, yeah, uh, we're starting to see the scaling potential of Storm and Dro. Yep, I agree. It looks like we had a five-man smoke. I, I don't know if they're up that Dire Observer Ward caught them out. I, they were by that secret shop. We will see. It looks like we might have another five-man smoke. Yeah, two five-man smokes looking for each other. <laughs> Both going in opposite directions in each other's jungles. Both teams going on some yeah. warding missions. So it looks like they, they did not catch out that. Uh, they were just out of uh, sight of that Dire Observer Ward. Dire does they might throw bump down. into each other. All the initiation by uh, Boomishock blinks in and ults and stuns. But be happy, pops his BKB. Might still go down here. He ults. Uh, meanwhile, out comes the rock from Warlock. Uh, be happy is able to take down Mr. T, but Essay will uh, finish off Be happy. Uh, butt toucher almost going down here. SA now throwing out right clicks on the storm speed or on I'm sorry uh, the Lena and a Disengage now I think so they are pinging her out so it looks like they're trying to chase him down But I think this team is already oh King uh, Butt toucher is able to t take down King pink with a uh, rocket flare meanwhile Kona taking on both of these uh, golems boom shock though Getting gone on by Butt Toucher, Essay gets trapped in the cogs and will get brought down by Cybonic. So good chase by this Radiant team. 
Definitely agree. Yeah, I think that is um, Joe's probably biggest weakness. If she gets caught in those cogs, it's it's basically over for her. I mean, she did massive amounts of damage in that last clash, but I think if she backed further instead of turning back around, uh, she would have survived that. But cogs are definitely not the best place for her. Yeah, and she was already loaded to begin with, and that's a tier two lost. Here I am. Looks like clockwork is drawn wanting to go and take out this last remaining tier two yeah they definitely need to push these lanes out um i mean it looks like almost all of them have been pushed quite forward it's just this bottom tower that needs to be taken my storm spirit uh remnants are like pink yeah it's like a weird color i noticed that as well I'm not sure if it's a cosmetic of his or what it is. Maybe it's just a graphical thing. Maybe. It's acting a little funny for me earlier. It looks like they are going to try to uh, take down this tower, but the uh, Dire is wrapping up even from behind, so there are a bunch of pinks coming out. In comes Kona. Uh, oh, I thought there was a hero nearby. I, I thought so, too. I thought Urso was there. Was he not? He probably blinked out. Yeah. So, decent amount of damage done to this tier 2. I'm sure they'll return soon to finish that off. Looks like SA is trying to provide some pressure on the opposite side of the map. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a good tactic right now for the Radiant to kind of push tower, group up a bit, push a tower, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, if it, once these guys initiate, I, I don't know how it's going to be for uh, the Radiant side. Yeah. It looks like Spooby's working on a rod of Atos. Oh, uh, all coming out from Boomer Shock. They're able to catch Butt Toucher. He, he Blade Mail's trying to save himself, but Kona is able to finish him off. You can come out of that tin can and looks like a push will come out on this bot lane. Uh, Let's see. We have a Warlock who finished up his Ag, so probably going to be seeing a... Uh, oh, we already saw the two Golems. He's had it for a while. Uh, but the Lotus Orb did get finished on the Centaur as well. Yeah, probably we looking to, to purge off uh, someone, like uh, Fatal Bonds on someone or something. I agree, and we have Kona with his 22 Bloodstone charges. Man. Uh, I don't know, is this Radiant team, are they gonna... Okay, yeah, they're starting to TP back now. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't see any defense happening, but... Yeah, it looks like all all guys came back down here. What do you think of this uh, Radiant team? Do you think they have a great high ground tower defense? Um, I think they have some decent uh, wave clear with the Lena and um, like uh, Crystal Nova from the CM. But right. I don't know. I think this. I think they have decent. D uh, defense. Oh, out comes a hook shot on uh, Lolly. Uh, gets caught in the cogs. Four staffs out. The the golem is dropped to counter initiate. Mr. T will end up going down, and a boat is thrown at, thrown out. Catches two, but unable to kill either one. And Rocket Flare to again take down more. Be happy. Blinks in is chasing after Kona and Lolly, but they might just be a little bit too fast. Kona using his the haste rune. yeah the haste rune and the bottle to. Uh, up his mana a bit. Meanwhile, Essay's split pushing over here on this opposite lane and will take out the last remaining tier two and then will retreat to TP out. Yeah, I don't see Radiant having too much, uh, you know, high ground tower defense. I mean, the Ursa with his blink he could get in, but he has no way of coming out. So, um, I mean, besides the Golems and that kind of team fight with Lena's spammable heroes, it's very targeted. Mm hmm. I think. I think the siege potential of the dire team is much greater than their than the radiance uh, tower defense. Yep, I definitely agree. And we have that maelstrom coming out for SA. Uh, he's pretty close. Yeah, he's pretty close to uh, Mjolnir as well. M. Jolnir. M. Jolnir. M. Jolnir. Let's see what else we got. Oh, oh. Kona going in on Butt Toucher. He pops the, the blade mail but gets torrented and a boat just to make sure in case if he wasn't dead before, he is now. He is definitely dead. 
definitely overkill. Uh, yeah, he was a little bit out of position, a bit too far forward, trying to push that lane out, but uh, no one was near him, so maybe um, bad positioning for that clockwork. Mm hmm. Got another four sap being built on Boomershock as well, and re to respond and save teammates from the uh, the cogs when when uh, Clockwork is able to catch someone out. So more four sap gaming. gaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Ursa's got his Skull Basher, his BKB. What else is he working on? Trying to get his Abyssal Blade. Yeah, I think they're just lo looking for a lot of uh, lockdown on this uh, Storm Spirit. At least I hope they're they're working towards that. Yeah, I agree. He's definitely been slippery, just in and out, trying to cause chaos and you know cause damage while Dro is just cleaning it up from the back lines. Mhm. Mm and looks like they're looking to take uh, Roshan here. It doesn't even look like the radiant. Yeah, they obviously could not contest. Maybe they didn't even realize that these guys are up there. Mhm. Mm and I mean they've lost quite a bit of their uh, map control. They do still have their shrines, but maybe not for long, depending on how this uh, next engagement looks like it'll go. Yeah, I agree. It looks like they're, they might be a little blind on the map with only two wards out and not in the places that are most dire to be seen. So it looks like I'm two, uh, two lanes being pushed in. Kona on the top lane. Meanwhile, the rest of his team here on the bot lane. And there's Essay's Mjolnir. Coming in, yep. Spooby was trying to get the, uh, the lane pushed out, and he TP's back, getting ready for this team fight. Uh, does look like does he have his chaotic offering back up? Uh, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's ready. So it looks actually all all alts are up and ready to be used. Kona causing more chaos and pulling four heroes to this top lane. Um, Meanwhile, the team is coming, trying to push out the bottom lane. Yeah, I think they're just trying to keep pressure on all these lanes, keep them in their base, so they can't be out farming their own jungle and catching back up. Yeah, I definitely agree. It doesn't look like this Radiant team can really leave base now. I mean, they they can't really see much on the map. Mm-hmm. And Kona, both Kona and Joe are pretty scary right now. Cybonic trying to force that forward and catch Kona in a uh, Frostbite, but... Just, a, just barely out of range. Yep, yep, I agree. Yeah, it looks like our, this is kind of where Ursa starts falling off a little bit. He's uh, dropping off. I mean, he is still top of his team for net worth, but uh, it looks like this Dro and uh, Storm are snowballing quite a bit, and they're pulling ahead. Yeah, I think one of the disadvantages is that, you know, He's so dependent on like a blink initiation, so just like he did on uh, Boomashock. Boomashock ults trying to get out, but will get brought down. But that pushes in this, his team on the bot lane to take the bot tier 3, and they fortify to save it. SA tries to continue hitting it, but be happy blinks in, and Mr. T goes down to golems and be happy. Meanwhile, Kona does get CM on the top lane, and trading hits with Butt Toucher before he uh, zips out. But massive amount of damage done to this bot t uh, tier three. Just one, one or two more hits, and this will be um, gone. Yep, I agree, and they're definitely pinging that out. They they know that their base is beginning to get pushed on, and uh, they did a dire team doing a great job of split pushing, kind of keeping pressure on all lanes, like you said. Um, this radiant team is going to try to push out with these golems towards mid, but uh, this the dire team knows what's up. They know what they're trying to do. Mhm. Mm yeah, I think Boomashock got caught out of position there, but he at least uh, helped got his ult off before he died, which allowed his team to run in and do quite a bit of damage. Oh, but Toucher tries to hook shot King Pink, but misses and hits a creep instead. Does get X'd and uh, torrented. In comes Kona, silences him and grabs him with a vortex. He pops Blade Mail, trying to save himself, but Kona is able to take him down. Oh, and man. he blinks, he ults and goes for it in, and another Vortex possibly coming out by... Nope, they just take him down. And that's two heroes lost. Yeah, they, they definitely, I think, started... I don't know how uh, efficient it was to move forward with that. They already had the Golems moving forward, so... 
maybe not pushing too far, uh, knowing that they were kind of blind, they couldn't see out into the dire side of the map. Agreed. And here comes this dire team looking to uh, try to finish off this uh, bottom tier 3. Or at least let the creeps do it for them. Go creeps. Nope, yeah, no it's looking a little grim for the Radiant side, I Boom think, shot, as far as... It, finishes off, Lotus Orbs himself, throws out the stun, but does get taken down, pays for it with his life. But yeah. then again, opens up the shrine, so worth? Uh, I think so. I mean, this this Dire team has great... Uh, they're doing great at taking down objectives, and I think that's, you know, obviously what wins the game. You know, Radiant does really good on taking down one hero at a time, but... You know, you can only do so much while one hero is taking down, while each hero is taking down a different building. Mm hmm. And Dro almost instantly takes down that bottom uh, shrine and looks like this. Top shrine quickly follows suit. And. Bye bye, shrines. Yep, just their map control severely inhibited now. Yeah, look at all those wards from the dire side and. And the Radiant are trying to get out of their base, but I don't think they can go very far right now. I mean, uh, they're badly getting pushed in on all three lanes. Mm-hmm. So what's the win condition for this Radiant team, do you think? What needs to happen? Uh, well, they can smoke and maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe pick off, you know, a few of these heroes. Like I said, they have really good, you know, targeted hero, um, targeted hero abilities. But I, I don't know. It's looking really hard for me to see these guys going through in a team fight. Uh, you know, maybe pulling out the dro or the storms just so they could push some objectives. If they can catch out one of those two, I think it would be greatly positive for these guys. But. Mm hmm. Oh, they oh. do see the SA. Be Happy blinks in, gets stunned up, and will get taken down by Be Happy farming and his own jungle. that is dead. Yeah, dead Dro. That, got, that Dro got blown up. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think this team is really great with their targeted, you know, one pick off one by one kind of thing. And I think if the Radiant or the Dire team sticks together, you know, I, I don't see much happening for the Radiant, but, you know, someone's constantly out of position or out of uh out of line mm -hmm. looks like they're both gonna try to go for their base yeah but i think definitely have the advantage here on for the dire kunkka does tp back and so does centaur but not before they go ahead and take down at least one rack uh dire or radiant team looks like they will take down oh the fortification comes out and that's one set of racks down on the Radiant side, they do manage to take a tier three mid tower. Be happy going on the range barracks gets gusted. Uh, out comes a hook shot uh, by Butt Toucher in deep into the base uh, and is unable to get a kill. Be happy does finish off Boomashock, but I mean, they're trying to take these uh, mid barracks and they do get them, but their, their uh, own base is getting taken. Boomashock blinks in, stuns up. Be happy, be happy, still concentrating on the towers out comes a cm all immediately gets finished or canceled and ursa goes down now cybonic getting caught dark star really low throws out a light strike array uh, but is unable to finish him off and they're on the retreat now but not before their entire base has been ravaged almost all three uh towers being taken down and butt toucher gets sized up mr t trying to escape now as well back comes in uh Oh, well, out comes the Laguna Blade to finish him off. Yeah, oh. I, I don't know how worth oh. that was. I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, go, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know how worth that was. I know I can see the effort that they were trying to, you know, go straight for the throne, but they, they lost so much trying to do that uh, just for that uh, one lane of Rex. So uh, no one was coming back to defend. I think it might have been good to maybe have at least one person TP back for some kind of defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they should have either TP'd it back before they even finished the tower or as soon as they got the tower backed up and went back because by that time they had already lost one, probably almost two full lanes of racks. In comes Kona. He does finish off the rack. Butt Toucher does uh, hook shot him, but immediately has uh, Kona is able to get him out. 
Drow does get disarmed and Rod of Atos, and Darkstar gets blown up by uh, Boomashock. Now in comes Be Happy with the BKB going on King Pink. Uh, Torrent comes out, but he's BKB'd up. Cybonic throwing out the uh, uh, ult, but is unable to keep it going for much longer. And SA will get caught out by Ursa and get taken down. Able to slow. They, they are defending, but they are losing their ta their uh, buildings one by one. Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree there. Yeah, it looks like these guys are kind of just uh, slowing the inevitable. I it's looking. I mean, like I said, these guys are radiant team is really good on kill potential, killing off one by one. But the dire is just slowly, slowly pushing in, mm -hmm. taking a hold of their base. Yeah, and Kona's keeping this uh, top lane pushed in as much as he can, trying to let these creeps finish off this uh, last range barracks for him. Double damage. And the courier some... gets sniped as well. Yeah, it doesn't look like there was anything on it, but uh, he was heading towards that secret shop. Ursa with a DD rune searching, finds an illusion, and then gets pinged out. Yeah, it looks like this Radiant team is really going to try to go for this mid uh, this mid lane again, trying to go for that tower. Looks like they're trying sorry, to the end the game. In the game. Yeah. Might end up with a base race here, but that they just got megged. Mm -hmm. So he's going to go for these tier 4s. Out throws the uh, golems as well. They're going to try to finish off. He blinks in on uh, Mr. T. Mr. T shallow graves himself, he, but he gets Atos by Spooby. And he starts backing up. Uh, they looks like they might lose one tier four, and now they're going on the other. Be happy. Blinks in on uh, Miss, on King Pink, then throws down the Abyssal on Centaur. Meanwhile, in the back lines, Kona blows up Spooby, and is uh, dancing around. Cybonic trying to get away. Be happy getting kited around. Cybonic and Be Happy will both go down, uh, and that just leaves two heroes alive uh, with. Uh, one hero with buyback on this radiant team. Yeah, just one hero yeah, with buyback. Yeah, looks like. Mm -hmm. So that might be yeah, I mean, game. I I agree. It was definitely a an admiral effort there, trying to push forward on that on the throne. I mean, they were all there defending, so it was just a little tough that. Um, at least no one was down here pushing, but it was a little tough to go against that team fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're just going to secure this Roche and probably just end the game. So I wonder who's taking... Okay, Kona, Kona takes it. I think that's a wise decision. I okay. agree. Be happy going on uh, Kunkka, but Kunkka's able to X marks himself out, out of the base. Yeah, these guys are defending against Megas and an Aegis, so... Yeah, I, th I don't know. I think if they would have pushed just down mid, uh, mid, uh, they would have been able to finish it. Um, Pause, please. Unironically. <laughs> I think this is a good time. To I just got a message from Grouty. Uh, do you have your open mic on? I do. I thought I did. Oh, it should have been on team, correct? Yeah. <laughs> no, I did not. You were talking to yourself the whole entire time. I promise, guys, I'm not crazy. <laughs> uh, he was talking to someone. I am here. I am present. <laughs> if you guys do want to hear Gin Giraffe, please check out YouTube where the <laughs> uh, VOD will be posted uh, after in-houses tonight. She has very, very good content, very good input, I promise. So <laughs> you'll want to listen in. Oh no, a few minutes into the game. <laughs> Rip. Well, at least we had a dot pause here, so you will get some of our dot pause shenanigans. Today's dot pause is brought to you by Patreon. <laughs> the in houses and dot p are po uh, made possible by you guys and your donations. Please consider con contributing to the dot p uh, Patreon. You can find it at patreon.com forward slash defense of the patients. Donate today. You have a great commercial voice. I think that should be recorded and played on the end of a podcast. I don't know. I think I don't know. I think they got it already. 
Maybe they really should just do pre-recordings of all the plugs, at least that way they can play all of them. Yeah, just a minute of plugs and then get into the actual episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's better than Sunkissed, I say. Or we could get you know, some sun drop in here. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it looks like these guys are basically just defending against their mega creeps. Mm hmm. I think uh, one pick pickup uh, that I really liked in this game was uh, Butt Toucher picking up the Halberd, uh, which has either helped them win team fights or helped them defend buildings. Uh, by disarming SA or the Storm Spirit numerous times. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, that Halberd was definitely doing quite a quite a bit of work, but this Kona, he's just going in and out, in and out. Yep, X, the glory of X marks the spot. Yeah, that must be really frustrating. I mean, when you think that you have that hero, and then he's just all of a sudden out of there. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, most of this defense, I feel like, has just been against Mega Creeps. Yeah, waiting to see an actual push in. They're kind of just letting the creeps destroy all the uh, buildings for them, all the effigies and, and everything. Right, yeah, I agree. I mean, mega creeps are really hard to defend against. Those guys are are tough, you know? They're, they're mega. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, and there's not much AoE uh, happening, I mean, besides Lena and maybe the CM. Boom is shot, getting gone on by Be Happy, but he ults and uh, is able to escape. Uh, blinks in, tries to stun, instantly cancels it as he realizes he won't be able to get anyone with it. More X marks to spot shenanigans coming out from King Pink. He gets frostbited uh, and is able to get out. Stop out. Yep, and then Boom is shot, is able to take down two. Out comes the Golem doing a lot of damage. Uh, Aegis has popped. Cybonic, though, uh, will fall, and Spooby gets stunned up and will go down as well. And that is GG. Great yeah, valiant think... effort by both these teams. Yeah, definitely. I think during that clash, though, you know, there was no one quite really watching the creeps, and the creeps were just going on those towers while they were trying to kill off the, uh, the dire side, but... Uh... I think, uh, like you said, Valiant Effort, if that mid lane push if it was only successful, I think we would have had a closer game. Mm hmm. Very close, ga very close game and a very fun one to watch. So, this has been TJ Sutton and Jin Giraffe on the mic. Thanks for watching. Thank you. I was only there for.